Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. Brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah the Almighty to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, sadly we have drawn very close to the end of this beautiful and blessed month of Ramadan. Allahu Akbar. So at the very outset of tonight's talk, I wish to express my sincere love for all of you all and the brothers and sisters viewing this video that I love all of you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as how he united us here in this world for his sake that he should unite us in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on Al-Afu. We will be touching on Al-Afu. And that is to pardon, to forgive, and to overlook. Allahu Akbar. It is indeed a very, very noble quality. It is from the qualities of the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam. And unlike what some people think, some people think that to pardon, to overlook, to forgive is a sign of weakness. Rather, you should be stubborn, you should be arrogant, you should be defiant, you should prove your point, you should not become a stepping rug to others. This is a wrong mentality. Rather, we should turn towards forgiveness. We should turn towards pardoning others. Because this is from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, the Sahaba ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'een. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in the Noble Quran, وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ That if you pardon, if you overlook, if you forgive, then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Many a time, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, at times we are wronged and we have the right to ask for justice. We have the right to ask for our rights. But then at that point, at that crucial point, if we forgive that individual who wronged us, then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises his forgiveness for us. Allahu Akbar. So let us try to inculcate this noble quality. Because when we look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Look at how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was persecuted. How much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of prophets, how much he was put into difficulty. But he never ever raised his hands against his ummah. He loved his ummah, his nation so much that he forgave them. When he went to Ta'if, the people of, the, people of Mecca, Quraysh, they chased him out. When he went to Ta'if, they stoned him. They had the street urchins run after him, stoning him and pelting him so much to the extent until he was bleeding. Blood was running down his body. His shoes were clogged. Allahu Akbar. The angels come down asking him, shall we crush this town using the mountains? But what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He forgave them. 
he forgave them and he said something along the lines of these words that perhaps down the line in their generations someone would accept the message of Islam someone some one of them would accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accept me as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar this is indeed a noble quality that we have to bring about my dear brothers and sisters in Islam there's an amazing hadith a hadith which made Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smile Allahu Akbar because he was so amazed by the hadith the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes a scene that will take place on the day of Qiyamah a scene that will take place on the day of Qiyamah two men will come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala two men will put forward their case in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the narration goes along the lines of these words one of them will be a volume and the other will be a mazloom one will be an oppressor and the other one will be the oppressed one so the one who was oppressed will cry out ya Rab, ya Allah this one so and so he oppressed me so I want justice today I want to take from his good deeds and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will permit that individual to do so and he will start taking from his good deeds because he was oppressed by that individual he will keep taking from his good deeds until the one who oppressed him his good deeds will all run out but still there will be something remaining from his right to take from him and then he will cry out, Ya Allah, now that his good deeds have run out, you burden him with my sins, Allahu Akbar. His good deeds have completely gone dry, now you burden him with my sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to that individual, the one who was oppressed, look towards Jannah, Allahu Akbar. Then that individual will look towards Jannah. He will see Jannah with all its grandeur, with all its beauty. He will see the palaces. He will see the rivers, rivers of milk, rivers of wine, rivers of pure sweet water. He will see the orchards of Jannah. He will see the beautiful fruit, the trees, all of the beautiful scenes of Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to that individual, the one who was oppressed, the one who has the right to ask for his rights, he will say to him, he will say to him, this is for you, this Jannah is for you, if you can pay the price for it. If you can pay the price for it, then Jannah is for you. Then that man will say, Ya Allah, how am I to pay the price for such a beautiful place? How am I, what have I got to pay the, uh, for Jannah? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, You have, you have what it takes to pay for Jannah. You have what it takes. The man will say, No, I don't. I don't have what it will take to pay for Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will state, If you forgive, your brother, if you forgive the one who oppressed you, then that is for you, Allahu Akbar. Immediately, that slave of Allah will cry out, Ya Allah, I forgive him. I forgive him. The records are clear. There's nothing between me and him, Allahu Akbar. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say unto them, He will say unto the one who's oppressed, You can hold the hand of your brother and both of you all can enter Jannah. The one who oppressed and the one who was oppressed. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The minute we take upon this quality, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this quality is the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah the Almighty sees that in a slave of His, Allah the Almighty will say that I am more deserving I am more deserving to uphold that quality upon my slave, Allahu Akbar. Indeed, if we forgive, if we pardon, if we let go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed forgive our sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran, Rush to the forgiveness of your Lord. Run to the forgiveness of your Lord. And run towards a garden. The real estate, 
the square footage of that garden is the seven heavens and the earth. Allahu Akbar. Run towards such a garden. U'iddat lil muttaqeen. It has been prepared for the people of taqwa. Allahu Akbar. It has been prepared for the people of taqwa. Who are the people of taqwa? Alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra'i wal dara'i wal kaadimeena al ghayb. والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين. The people of taqwa, they are those الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء. They are the ones who spend in ease and hardship. والكاظمين الغيظ and they are the ones who restrain their anger they are the ones who control their anger and والعافين عن الناس they are the ones who pardon others Allahu Akbar they are the ones who overlook others they are the ones who forgive others والله يحب المحسنين and Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves the doers of good Allahu Akbar in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, وَأَن تَعْفُوا أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى That you, for you to forgive, for you to uh, pardon, it is very close to taqwa. It is almost as if it is like this with taqwa. It is so close in proximity to taqwa. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, that أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ It has been prepared. Jannah has been prepared for the people of taqwa. If you want to become from the people of taqwa, then pardon, then forgive, and overlook the faults of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states again in the Noble Quran, وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Let them pardon, let them forgive, وَلْيَصْفَحُوا And then let them overlook. أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ Do you all not like it or do you all not love if Allah were to أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should forgive you all. Wallahu ghafoor rahim. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, the most merciful. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us inculcate this beautiful quality of overlooking, pardoning others and forgiving others. Let us forgive and forget. Let us not harbor all of those things in our mind. Because the more hatred we harbor, we're not going to be able to look at our brother with a clean heart. Let us forgive and let us forget. Let us completely take it out of our hearts. For the minute we do that, Goodness, love, unity, peace, compassion, all of these lovely qualities will, will be ingrained in an individual's heart and it will make life a lot more easier for him. It will be easier for him to move with the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So therefore let us work towards this great noble quality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. May he accept our good deeds and may he help us to complete this beautiful and blessed month attaining the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, attaining the gardens of Jannah and may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how he has been uniting us for the past whole month every single night. So let him unite us in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wai an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum Allahu khair. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate. And stay updated by joining our network's social links.